Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the STEM Club India webcast. Today we have a very special guest, uh, Ms. Deepa Bhushan, Director of uh, the CP Goenka Group of Schools. Uh, welcome ma'am, hope you're all well, hope you're keeping safe. And uh, I'll start with uh, your quick introduction, uh, Ms. Deepa Bhushan, Director CP Goenka Group of Schools an educationist with over 25 years of experience and expertise in handling the 360 degree domain of education. Ms. Deepa is the recipient of the National Award for Excellence for Outstanding Work in the Field of Education. She has been awarded the Visionary Leader of the Year at the Future Leaders Summit and Awards and the Best Director of the Year at the International School Awards Dubai. She has been honored with the Innovation in Child Development Award at the Global Triumph Foundation World Summit and the Progressive Educationist Award by Evolve Excellence at Progressive Academic Excellence Conference and Cognizance Maharashtra for her sincere contribution towards equality in the Indian education system. Under her leadership, CP Goenka Group of Schools ranked amongst the top 10 schools of Mumbai as per the Times School Survey and got featured in the Hindustan Times Ultimate Schools of Mumbai. She has essayed multiple roles in her journey, a teacher, a curriculum designer, head of primary curriculum, head of curriculum K-12, principal and present director schools for the CP Goenka crew. Now, how does all of this seem so far to you? How does you know one have so many achievements and still be so humble? First of all, thank you so much for having me here, Manish and Tarun and uh... It's my pleasure to be here. Well, it's a journey and uh, a never-ending learning journey is what I call it. So because I'm in the field of education, the first step, I think, is uh, for me to always keep learning. And uh, I think when you know that you don't know enough uh, is uh, when you're constantly working towards something that you keep evolving. And uh, I would like everyone in the field of education to also work in a similar manner or to learn in a similar manner. So you have to be a lifelong learner, always. All right, so, uh, you know, when uh, all of us uh, at STEM Club India and Dynamo Sports, you know, actually got into uh, education, we principals, school directors became celebrities for us, you know, because, you know, in our first year, we understood that uh, it's not an easy job to manage, uh, you know, your first 100 or your first 200 students. And uh, you are managing, I think, more than thousands of students at the group, and you know everyone has different aspirations. So for us, you are more like an idol. But uh, for Ms. Deepa Bhushan, you know, who is your idol, and you know, why do you consider him, her, or anything to be your idol for that matter? So one of the things uh, that's difficult for me is to have an idol. Uh, it's because I question why a lot, uh, you know, for everything I'd like to know why or what a particular person has done. And uh, every aspect has like two sides of the coin. Like, you know, there are some goods and there are not so goods. I think which is why nowadays you have so many idols who suddenly have feet of clay because you realize they are human. So in that sense, uh, I don't have a specific idol. Yes, but I do uh, look at certain elements being ideal in a lot of people and something that I would like to follow and take forward in my life. So I wouldn't be able to, I, and this sometimes even comes uh, from the simplest of people or people who may not be in my chain of, uh, you know, who may be at a higher position or anything, which is someone who deals uh, with challenges in life in the right manner or who looks at children at the core and does things uh, in the right manner. So, so many things uh, are there with this. So not a single idol, but many people whose characteristics I idolize. I think I'd like to say that. Okay, so that's pretty much, uh, you know, it, it, it's the same with me when I look at things and say, okay, there's a lot of whys in this. And when we're in school, you know, in, in the fifth grade, you might have a certain idol. And then uh, in the sixth grade, you would ask why. And then that idol would change. And then, you know, you'll incorporate the good things of the new idol. So, yeah, I think, yeah, you're st still a student. 
you still feel uh, that uh, i think that relates to something that you said that i want to keep on learning as a student so yeah pretty interesting on uh, that front uh, all right so the next uh, question that uh, we have here is uh, i'm pretty sure you'll have a very interesting and a strong point of view on this is what is your quote or uh, you know a mantra that you follow for life be kind that's all just be kind uh i think if your sense of empathy or something uh you know your sense of being uh understanding of others is very strong uh you know you yourself have reached a space of uh where you are able to support others understand others you can make an impact in life and uh, i believe being kind is very important so for me that's my chotu sa mantra uh, and that's something that i apply to all areas whether professional whether personal i believe it helps a lot and what happens when you reach what happens when miss deepa bhushan goes out and looks out for empathy i think i get it when needed and i also believe this uh i am a strong believer in destiny and karma and all these also so i believe that when i need it i will get it and if i haven't got it there's a lesson i need to learn which must be something for my growth and my evolution does it disappoint you when you don't get it of course i'm human at the end of the day it does but uh, when uh, i need to sleep over it and uh, i do a lot of self talk Mm-hmm. uh a lot of uh, self talk and to look at the brighter side of life so that's another quote or mantra that i follow is how can i look at the brighter side of life so uh i always try and do that all right okay so that was uh, you know getting to know another side of uh, you for all our viewers and students you know who will be looking at this uh the next one uh, again a very interesting one is uh, <clears throat> how did you decide that uh, you know education is going to be uh, something that you will be pursuing as a career and what was the inspiration well when i started off it was just something that i did uh, you know honestly just did because i had that kind of time uh, you know i had young children so i got into the career just with that i also wanted to learn how to teach my own children so just started off with that but in my journey as i was going through it i saw the impact we could have on children and uh, let me tell you there is no bigger impact on a child than the impact that a teacher has a good teacher can change the life of a child and actually you know the future changes so and if i could be one that would be great and if i could help others to also be great teachers i mean we'd actually be creating a generation of teachers who are helping the future generations to come up uh, to be better human beings uh, and better supported all right so yeah that's a lot of uh, deep introspection that people would do once they listen to this particular aspect So in your school days when you were in school uh what was your favorite sport uh this was this is long back that we are talking but yeah what would be your favorite sport table tennis table tennis at that time played a lot of table tennis yeah lots and lots and even in school uh, i remember i am a student of arya vidya mandir the one at santa cruz and uh, we used to have this uh, small teachers table and we used to play rounders around the teachers table and even if we didn't have a table tennis racket we used to play with our hands or uh, earlier we used to have the textbooks that used to be bound yeah so they used to have the hard covers we used to play with that as long as you know and a compass box used to be the net in the center mm-hmm. and the table was smaller but even then so we would play you know slowly but table tennis was something that we had to play just had to play so helps with your uh, lot of controlling your nerves right you don't just smash things off you yes, yes. Yeah. a lot of patience <laughs> all right uh, <clears throat> what are uh, ms deepa bhushan's uh, favorite hobbies and i i sort of make this a little tougher when you were in school or college and now ah uh, 
well when i was in school and college i had a lot of hobbies let me tell you um so i'm basically an extremely creative person extremely so i have tried everything so i used to do a lot of craft and arts and play um you know make up a lot of games make up a lot of uh, i'd say uh, uh, you know what do you call those uh, little toys soft toys and all those kind of the art i i i painted on walls i've done all that when i was younger uh, you know even try on uh, beauty uh, treatments and things like that i used to, I used to do a lot of all that so just had to create something of course as i grew older and i came into the field of education i think all my creativity went into the techniques of teaching how could i make teaching and learning more creative now as i've grown older uh, i think my hobby really uh, is uh, how can i bring in great strategies for great education to come across is my thought that always goes on and i keep reading up with what's happening new how do we bring it in education my thoughts work that so yes but art is uh, also a big hobby of mine and not in the typical sense but really even if it's appreciation of art now because i don't get so much time to actually sit and paint and all so it's more about the appreciation of art which is there at this time and reading of course that's a given yeah that, that's goal that that goes with every uh, you know educator who wants to make a make or create an impact in uh, any particular fashion but the interesting thing that i see is uh, you know having a hobby that is going to impact thousands of others in some way or the other let's say if you have how many how, how do you put that up like how do you say you have i think more than 100 teachers that you have to look at oh, or much even, more. right much more yeah big group yeah so how do you ensure that okay what's the your success ratio you say 75% 90% or let's say okay even 10% of the teachers take whatever i'm giving from this session is an impact how would you say that i honestly don't know how to define success and uh uh well i see a lot of people wanting to do and do end up doing something that i'm sharing with them so in that sense well a lot but as a percentage i wouldn't be able to give you that uh, percentage and say that yeah this is the impact i've i've honestly never looked i just share all right i just share my learning and i uh, do it in the simplest form i believe in uh, teaching in the simplest form okay uh, you know keep it so simple that anybody can understand it and is able to do it is what i believe in so in that sense very interesting uh <clears throat> next one uh, is you know we get to you know what you have been doing and the thoughts on how the schools and students are there on stem so how do you think is stem education uh, you know changing the lives of your students uh, i think going i know a lot of infrastructure i know a lot of uh, you know things are being given to students in terms of stem but we want to understand an overall picture of uh, how do you think stem education is changing the lives i think one of the most important things is to understand what stem uh, really personifies yeah it's not about engineering technology science or math really I, at least uh, that's not something i see that i see it as something that brings in the 21st century skills and it allows for that the creativity the innovation that needs to come through the collaboration the communication all that needs to happen is actually happening through stem so stem uh, i don't see as a final outcome but i see it as a pathway uh, towards the skill sets we want to develop in children so making them critical thinkers innovators uh, you know people who can think clearly a problem solvers all these elements are actually uh, you know coming in through stem all right so uh, i'll put it in a different aspect so uh, when we look at you know globally st- schools across uh, you know out of india they say that you know our students should be employable once they finish in school but that's that's not a standard level of stem programs that we are doing in india uh, is sort of targeting towards building those skills do you think that trend changing do you think students will have internship opportunities with companies right after school uh, they will uh you know with the national education policy coming in and showing so much uh, focus 
in this area of vocational education also, there is going to be a lot of focus and even internship is a part of the NEP. So there will, you know, when a policy document starts focusing on something, uh, it may start happening, it's happening in pockets currently, but the scale will start increasing. And that's a space really that we need to, in because whatever said and done, you know, uh, we know that when I do something, I remember it the most. When I have practical knowledge is when I understand and understand the concepts to the best level. It's the application space that actually takes me to the higher level of thinking skills. So internship is really seeing application in real life. So do you think it will be more challenging for uh, you know, us as educators to upskill ourselves as much as possible in, in the coming time? Is it going to be a big challenge or it's going to be a very smooth transition for you know, the educators, teachers, the leaders who are going to be executing the policy? Well, it's not going to be easy. Uh, any change, anything new that comes on board does take time because you're understanding. Uh, see, also as a country, we have so many different levels of students, the background knowledge that they have of leadership who has different kinds of skill sets, different kind of background knowledge. So for everyone to upskill themselves, access to resources is another one, is going to take uh, time. But one of the things that I strongly believe in, where there is a will, there is a way. And I think if that comes forth, people will go ahead on this path. So basically, overall, uh, every, everyone uh, in your network is pretty excited about the NEP or they feel it's going to be a challenge? I know you've answered it, but just a one line on this. Uh, well, if I have to say, uh, everyone's doing a wait and watch. Okay. We know this was long overdue. In fact, in, uh, if you'll see in a lot of the international schools and a lot of, uh, you know, even our state board, uh, CBSE, ICSE schools, you, but it's, uh, you will see what the NEB is talking about already being implemented. But it's in pockets. What we're looking forward that how will it in, uh, impact the legalities, the procedures, the SOPs, all that, how will it impact of running our schools? And what will the changes come for? So a little bit of wait and watch is what everyone's doing. All right. Right. Uh, next. So uh, any suggestions and messages uh, that you have for you know, your fellow educators and uh, students around STEM and how the future of STEM is going to look like? So the first is embrace STEM. Yeah. Be open to it. Know uh, that it is a pathway for a generation, for a future generation, for future careers. And it is a pathway for that. So uh, a child at the end of the day may not end up taking a career related to engineering, but even then STEM will help. Math is something that's going to help you throughout. Technology, of course, today, I think the pandemic more than anything has proved, we're, you know, we've all had to upskill ourselves and change, I think is the only constant. So STEM is the pathway to embracing that change. So embrace STEM is what I would tell everyone. Perfect. So uh, the next one is pretty much relative, but going back to you know the root of uh, STEM in India. Now we have, I think, a couple of thousands uh, of uh, STEM initiatives uh, going around, maybe in pockets, maybe at the national level. A couple of them have gone uh, global as well. But do you think the current STEM initiatives in India are doing just justice in uh, preparing the next generation of youth or there is a gap uh, in any ways that you know one could think of so one of the things uh, what's happening is uh, when i look at stem activities and i look at you know coding and robotics and ai you know i see them running parallelly to a school program uh, you know the integration is very less in school programs across but my belief is uh, uh, it could also be due to the financial constraint that comes in with fees and everything to bring a pro such a program into the school curriculum. Uh, the timings that are there, you know, you already have a school curriculum to finish. So, but what, how do, how I see it is if it has to really have an impact, it needs to be integrated into the system, into a regular school system. It can't be run parallelly. It's like 
you know when we're looking at ict curriculum and we're looking at coding they run parallelly so everyone says do coding separately continue to do your ict curriculum but why can't the ict curriculum be upgraded to include coding and robotics within the system also uh, what happens is uh, you need a lot of uh, uh, material to work with whether it is software for technology or whether now that again how can how can the government and because they're looking at it in the nep how can the government make this easily accessible for all schools so that everyone can take it on and i think with the pandemic and the fees and everything everyone's finding that tough so the intent for everybody is to have it as a part of whatever mm-hmm. you want but there are certain challenges that need to be looked into at a larger scale okay so i think the stem initiative takers should understand the curriculum and then figure out ways to embed themselves over there or the school should be you know putting it up to them that you know structure it this way and then and we can figure things out yeah right. but i i think the board should really look at the curriculum all the right. boards should take the stem program into their curriculum so then it becomes a mandate for all schools to do all right yeah pretty interesting <laughs> because we always feel that you know because we are always on the other side of the table right so we feel that we have to figure out ways in which uh, we are able to embed ourselves in the curriculum but now that you put up put it up in a way that you know board has to make changes it gives a different perspective to it so the next one is uh, it's an achievement about your group of schools and you know what do you think about uh, them in the field of stem i know you know schools had massive massive uh, you know achievements with fnn schools uh, for the years that we've been working together but i'm pretty sure that there are several others that the school has had so i want you to talk a little bit about that so well uh, i would say we started uh, quite early we got in so there's a lot of awareness that needed to be created with parents uh, we started off with robotics so we uh, mrs archana goenka the trustee of the school started off with the cp goenka innovation lab you know where we uh, whether it was 3d printing whether it was robotics whether it was coding we were looking at all these elements and how do you bring it into the program so we were running it parallelly in a sense but we've had some of our children uh, from pune school for robotics go off to japan were in the final slot one out there uh, you know with what they created so uh, in a sense i'd say across in smaller sets and larger sets i mean our children have also of course been a part of the f1 uh, you know in that sense so across our schools children have taken on so well uh to all these elements of stem and even in the teaching where teachers get together to do collaborative teaching and teach children concepts so and do you think uh, you know one of the aspects like you told in in, in the previous uh, half of the session was you know students should be enhancing their you know skills that are essential for the 21st century do you think set of students were able to figure that out were they able to understand that you know this is my career this is what i'm going to do in the longer term or they were still exploring at that particular time so i see children still exploring i think uh, this space is also uh, very dynamic and uh, you know by the time children actually come to choose their career pathways at a later stage um this space would have evolved a lot so the children are still exploring and we are opening up that exploration for them like we have universities uh, you know which are different kinds of universities that are uh, giving a um actually uh, having a lot of different courses so we get them to come and speak to our students we have resource people who come in to speak to our students because there's so much happening i mean when we look at technology there's so much so we also have a program within our schools called the tech talk uh in the tech talk we have the children speak about what are the different techn- technological and stem related innovations that are happening in the world around i've heard of that yeah and i heard i heard this from the students who were participating in fnn schools <laughs> so the children know so much and we said why not tap into that inner resource of the children and let them explore because when they are taking ownership of their learning they will be able to do much more 
ahead. Yeah, and I think everyone you know who's who's looking at this video should probably visit one of these talks and see you know the kind of uh, exposure the kids are getting and also see how the kids participate in it and it pretty much makes sense. I've heard I've never attended it, but I've heard a lot about it. And it seems pretty interesting. Amazing set of initiatives. Uh, I think with this we'll close this section, and the next one is uh, you know for students to get to know you better. Right. I'm going to make this as a rapid fire round and give you probably two seconds or three seconds to think about it and answer. Right. Eight questions. Uh, are we ready? Ready. Yeah. All right. So uh, the first one, uh, your favorite subject. The one in which I got full marks, whichever subject I got full marks in my favorite subject just to change as for that. <laughs> but still, in short, just one subject. Uh, History. History. Uh, the subject uh, you do not like. Physics. That I can say very okay. clearly. Okay. Physics. Okay. Didn't get it. Always the lowest score. Always the lowest score. But oh. now when I see the teachers teach, I wish they had taught me. <laughs> All right. Uh, your uh, your favorite sports uh, at present now. Um, yoga. If you can call that a sport. Ah uh, no, not not. Uh -huh. really. Nothing against uh, people who support yoga, but yeah, and I, apart from yoga. Uh, well, honestly, I haven't been so much into sports, so I don't know, but I do like badminton a lot. All right. Uh, your favorite cuisine? Uh, fusion. Your dream vacation? My dream vacation in Greece. Your favorite book? So my favorite book uh, is uh, Who Moved My Cheese? I don't know uh, if you read that, but who moved my cheese in my and one other one is fish, F I S H. All right, I've read the first one. Yeah, uh, line up your preference: uh, artificial intelligence, drone, F N in schools, robotics, coding. What is the basis for the lining up of the preference? Based on your priority, maybe. Okay, so artificial intelligence, coding, F one, robotics, and drones. All right. Drones at the end because uh, of the regulations? Not okay. really, because uh, maybe I need to know more about them. All right. okay. I don't know so much. Uh, if you were a student, which course will you opt for? Uh, artificial intelligence, drone, FN in schools, robotics, coding? Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. I'm very fascinated by it. All right. Perfect. Uh, I think I'd probably give you a seven on eight. <laughs> <laughs> Would I get an eight if I said F one? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We've, we've seen the kind of success that F one has had at school and pretty very confident. much, very uh, much. So that wraps up uh, our session, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, stay tuned for uh, another uh, set of uh, session by STEM Club India webcast. Uh, thank you, Deepa, ma'am. Thank you so much for your time. Thank and, you. Uh,